this video today I'm going to show you how I developed my own C41 film at my own darkroom. Now, first thing is first, I always make myself a cup of coffee. So I'm gonna get into that. So in this video, I am going to cover how I develop all my color film in my darker, which is just to the side of me here. So first thing I do is I get a water bar. So the developer and the Blix both need to be at about a 102 degrees Fahrenheit. So I need to get them up to temperature as they're sitting at about room temperature. So it needs to come up a little bit. For those who are in degrees, I believe it's like 39.5. I work in Fahrenheit just to keep it um, completely cohesive because all of the manuals and so on are written for American Fahrenheit. So as you can see here, I am literally filling up a tub of water. And so the glass tube that goes to the bottles there is a heater for an aquarium and it keeps the water at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So I just need to fill up the kettle that I use to heat up my water, just a little bit warmer than that, and then pour it into the bath and then drop the chemicals, which are in glass jars, into that water to warm up. So I keep the thermometer both in the top of the bottle of the developer, because it needs to be more accurate than the water inside the bath. So I keep my more accurate thermometer in the top, touching the developer inside the bottle, and then I also keep this thermometer inside the water to know where my bath is sitting temperature wise. Now, winding my film onto one of these is quite difficult. So within this video, I'm about to show you how I go about getting past this in the dark. Now the most difficult task is this. I have to unroll this in the dark and feed it onto this spool here. Now, this is difficult for a few reasons, mainly because the film is so tightly wound up inside here that it coils. So what I like to do is get a weight or a film clip and clip it to the base of this. So like this here, so one of these film clips is what you need to put on the bottom. So when you rip the film off the paper on this, you get this little tap here. So what I like to do is before rolling on, I clip one of these heavier clips on the film. So what it does is it pulls the film really straight. And then it is really, really simple to get your spool and load your film in. It just slides in rather than having to battle it in the whole way. So once you get through, you're just away and it slides on and you can then, because of the weight, just roll it in like this, nice and slow and nice and steady. So I like to wear an apron um, because it allows me to keep it, my shirts clean and I feel like a real chemist or alchemist or some something cool. In the pockets of my apron, I keep one of those film clips I was talking about and a pair of scissors. They are the two most crucial things I need when it goes dark and I try and roll that film on the reel. So the chemicals are warmed up. I'm gonna go and show you the process now of developing. Lights off. So the film is now carefully locked away within here. It, this lid is light tight once you lock it in. So I can now switch the lights back on and start using some chemicals. So let's do it. So we're about to start developing. So what we need to do first is measure out the chemicals into uh, some cylinders that have the measurements on the side. So you don't have to be too exact, but go to about 600 mils for a 120 millimeter film in your Patterson tank, which is kind of the obvious, it's the only choice really that you can make for tanks. 
So you're going to weigh out your developer or measure out your developer into one of the cylinders. And then while you are doing your agitation that you will see in a second, you will then rinse out that cylinder and reuse it again. Or at least that's what I do. So it goes developer, then Blix, then a stabilizer. They are the three steps in this process. You're about to see it right now. So what you're gonna watch through here is the chemicals go in and you agitate every 30 seconds, just four inversions, which you do over the entirety of the thing. So as the chemical gets up to the end time, which for the developer is about three and a half minutes, depending on the temperature of your chemicals, it needs to get one more agitation at the three minute mark and then you open the lid and pour it back into the original bottle because it can be reused. So you gotta do this really quickly because the chemicals don't exactly uh, stop functioning. Once you pour them out, the developer will continue working because it's on the film still. So pour the developer out and then you're in with the next chemical, which is Blix, which follows the same rules. You pour it in and as you're pouring it in, you knock down the lid and then you agitate for the first 10 seconds. You do four agitations uh, every 30 seconds after that. And the Blix, I believe, goes for about six and a half minutes, making a total of 10 minutes overall that you will be developing uh, and bleaching your film. So they're the main two that get your film to a light safe position and then you could actually take the film out and look at it before you get the stabilizer on. But you're gonna wanna rinse off the Blix, the bleach. So what I do is basically get the warm water that I created in that bath for those chemicals as rinsing water and, cr and fill up a bunch of different beakers and different cylinders to then rinse out that wa water. The reason I use warm water or around 102 degrees is means that you're not shocking the film by a temperature change going down to 22 degree water when it was developing in around 39 degrees Celsius this is. So you want water more around the 100 degree Fahrenheit where your, t your chemicals were originally. I think you get what I'm saying. So once you finish the rinse, you can take your film out and look to see if there's images on there. It is a little bit tempting straight away to pull it out. I try not to, but for the sake of this video, I'll show you here that there is clearly a uh, negative on this film that has been rendered. The chemical process clearly works, and then you can go ahead and stabilize in confidence that you haven't wasted the last 30 minutes of your life setting this up. And once you've stabilized the images, you can pull the film from the reel and then you have your images. I like to get a little film squeegee and just wipe off the excess liquid and hang it up to dry. And that's it. Film developed. So now it's just hanging up to dry usually just in a dust-free place, but there we have it, some images. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions about how to develop your own film at home, particularly C41 process, I have been doing a lot of research and a lot of practice recently, so feel free to leave the comments. If there's anything that I'm doing wrong, <laughs> feel free to let me know. If you enjoy this kind of content and want to see more film-related stuff on YouTube, please click the subscribe button and like this video as well. Yeah, that's all. Cheers. So there we have it from this to this.